music that we are uh, singing, the Gloria, this um, Alleluia, all of these were written by Clay, uh, for specifically for Good Shepherd. So this is our Good Shepherd uh, Mass music. If anyone has a title for it, we're still looking um, for a title. But um, this is a gift, Good Shepherd, what? Right? Shepherd's Mass. Shepherd's Mass. Beautiful. Plays Mass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a beautiful gift that, that Clay has given uh, this, this congregation. And we, of course, uh, I hope you have felt just our open hearts and um, arms to you, Clay, because you've made uh, such a huge inroad into us, into our lives here. So, you know, Clay, um, one of the things that he loves about Good Shepherd is that we worship all different <coughs> kinds of ways. We worship up on the hill, we worship out in the pasture, uh, we worship in the parish hall, we worship in church without heat or lights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but or, not without warmth. <laughs> Not without warmth in our hearts, always warmth in our hearts. And of course, um, today uh, is Folk Sunday, and they have all this beautiful, wonderful music that they have rehearsed, and we're still singing it um, acoustically. So thank you for being willing uh, to just step up. The, um, so in case you have not heard all the news around here, we've been without power in this location, and I know some of the rest of you who live along here have been without power for how long now? Since Friday, 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 Friday morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> 5 a.m. So if anybody has hot showers that they want to share, we can come to our house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so if you look out here, um, after the service, if you want to just go out the store and take a gander, we had a big uh, top of a tree come down and take out the fence, uh, part of the preschool fence. And uh, so that's being chopped up and repaired. Many thanks to Terry, who came out uh, yesterday. Paul did everything. Paul, who is our maintenance person here, <clears throat> is I had to give him a hug last night. I just said, could I give you a hug? Because you are a rock star. <coughs> Paul uh, came out here in the wind and all kinds of other stuff and, ch and got a lot of the tree <laughs> off the, the fence, and he'll be out here repairing um, the fence. Um, but there's, yeah. After he cut out the tree that was crossing the ground, out here. Oh, did he do that yeah, too? he did that at 4 a.m., and then he came here and started Yeah, thanks. I didn't even know about that. One of Paul's because he was great. Yes. And we also had a long planned event here last night by candlelight. Um, and uh, Paul helped to, I don't know how he did it, prepared the, the uh, parish hall for, for our nine o'clock worship service this morning. So if you see Paul, if you want to write Paul a note, please do, because we have an awesome staff here. And, uh, and um, Paul is not sitting here because he has his own church that he goes to. Uh, but Tralee is sitting right here, and these bulletins are a miracle, okay? <laughs> so thank you, Tralee, for, um, anyway, I just want you to be proud of your church and proud of your, the, the staff here. I started a while ago a series um, on our liturgy and why, how and why we worship the way that we do. And so throughout the year, I'm going to continue that series. And I thought today I wanted uh, to do that. The first part of the series talked about our uh, opening, our, the way that we gather. Uh, we process as kind of an icon for us, a window into this idea that we are all on a journey, that we journey through this life and into the fullness of God um, in eternity. And so we, we have our procession, and we begin with praise and prayer. We begin in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and of his kingdom, so that we're very clear uh, who we're worshiping and where we're going. We're going into the fullness of God's kingdom. 
The second part of our service that takes up a, a very big piece of our service is called the Word of God. And so we hear the scriptures read, and um, we hear a lot of scripture. We hear a lot of Bible uh, in, in our church. We hear from the Old Testament, the Psalms, the epistles, which are the letters to the early churches, and the gospel. Now, I can't possibly preach on all of that um, unless you want to be like one of those, you know, African churches where it's like an all-day affair. <laughs> so I choose a section. Uh, when Cynthia is preaching, she chooses a section uh, that we go into in greater depth. But if you take your bulletin home, you've got all this scripture to reflect on uh, throughout the week. So as Episcopalians, now one of the issues, one of the issues that you might have with the Bible, uh, that a lot of people have with the Bible, is that we approach it, you know, kind of like the IRS tax code. <laughs> you know? It's like important. You want to know what's there. Uh, you don't want to run afoul of it. You kind of want to know what loopholes there might be. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but you walk away from it kind of with a list of um, do this, don't do that, right? Some rules for living. And if you, you know, if you follow those rules, you're probably going to have a better life than if you don't follow those rules. So that's, that's a kind of a way of using the Bible. Um, and it's a way that a lot of us have used it and see it being used and and on the one hand there is it's really important to do study um, to, to study the Bible particularly the context and the culture that it was written in right because otherwise it's very hard to understand I mean some of the things you read you go I have no idea what this is talking about studying the text <coughs> the origins of the words, the context it was written in, particularly the culture that it was written in, helps to ground it and helps us to understand it a little bit more. So study is important, but that's only one piece. And there's a second, there's a second side to the Bible, getting the most out of the Bible. And the illustration that I heard that I really like is... Um, has to do with candy bars. So I'm gonna ask one of you, who, who likes candy here? Candy bars. What's your favorite candy bar? Sea Scotch Mallow. Sea Scotch Mallow. <laughs> yeah. Snickers. Snickers. Almond Joy. Yeah. Uh, okay, right? Almond Joy with that, that's the coconut, right? Love it. Okay, so you've got this Sea Scotch Mallow. And you dissect it, okay? You, you have it, you cut it up, you look at the various layers, like what's inside, is it marshmallow inside? It's caramel and marshmallow and dark chocolate. Oh, like how can you go wrong? Caramel, marshmallow, and dark chocolate. You cut it up, you admire the caramel, the chocolate, which is actually good for you, right? Antioxidants. Um, if you really want to know, you kind of read the ingredients, and you got to acknowledge the grams of sugar there, the uh, percentage of fat, um, the percent, you know, again, you admire it, it's gorgeous, and then you walk away from it. Like, would anyone do that? <laughs> Donna, would you walk away from your scotch and mallow? No. No, I mean, if you just, like, Okay, you, you got it down, you know what's there. That's like just studying the Bible. Okay, you study it, great, got some nuggets from that. You wanna, you wanna eat the scotch mallow. Otherwise, like, so you put it in your mouth, you savor it, you melt it in your mouth, you enjoy it. That's the other side of the scripture uh, that, we, that it's called meditation, scripture, meditation. Now some people, I don't think many people in this church, but some people have a hard time with the word meditation, right? Because that's what Eastern religions do. Um, but you know, Eastern religions also fast. They, a lot of them actually quote the Bible. 
Uh, they pray. So meditation is part of is part of our faith also. Um, I mean, in the Psalms, it's at least 17 times the psalmist urges us to meditate on the, on the word of God. And so that's the piece I want to talk about, is this scripture meditation, so that you enjoy, you can taste it. And, and what you do for the scripture meditation is you, take, you can take this psalm and try it out. Just, like, read the gospel. And you're going to ask Jesus, what, what strikes you? What captures your attention? And just sit with that for a while. Sit with what captures your attention. At 8 o'clock, we, you know, somebody just stopped on those words, do not resist an evildoer. Like, don't resist an evildoer? Aren't we supposed to resist evil? Um, and then have a conversation with God about that. Why did you draw my attention to that? That is really challenging. I don't like that. What do you mean? Um, or that's just what I need to encourage me right now. But you just want to sit, have a conversation with God, and eventually pray, and then rest. So it's, that scripture meditation is called, you read the text, you reflect on it, you respond in prayer, and then you just rest. Just rest. Just enjoy God's presence. It turns out that that's what we do in our liturgy. That's what we're doing here in our liturgy, is we read the text, we reflect on it, which is what I'm doing right now. Okay, we're reflecting together. I'm speaking, but we're reflecting together on what the text could be. We respond, because, you know, it would be really rude if I, if I spoke with Debbie... And she said nothing back to me. Like, if she never responded, it'd be kind of rude, right? So God speaks to us, and if we don't respond back with prayer, it's like, well, where's the conversation? So we respond with prayer, which is our creed and our prayers of the people. That's our response to God. And you know what our rest is? How we rest in God? Around the table. Then we move into the rest, the, the rest, which is Holy Communion. And that's what we'll talk about in another, ser- in another piece of this series, is what happens around the table for us. But I just want to kind of break open the Bible for you in a way that allows God to meet you there. God wants to, to meet us in Scripture. And, and when we combine study with meditation, with reading reflecting, responding in prayer, and then just resting quietly. We get more out of it. We can, we can, God can come to us and speak personally, personally to you. What is it saying to you today? Ah, if you're called, cuddle up to somebody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's stand. You might want to stomp your feet a little bit if your feet have gotten cold. And we'll say together um, the Nicene Creed. And just kind of help here. Sorry. So you want to lay hands on the choir. And the choir, if there are choir members, yeah, choir members. You sing and play at all. <laughs> Holy and gracious God, we give you praise and thanks that um, that you brought clay to us and that we have shared in his ministry of music, the, the ministry that you have clearly called him to. Uh, we thank you for his love for the church, for his love for us, um, and for his service to your people. We ask your blessing now on him as he journeys with his wife, Elizabeth, uh, to Arizona and on into uh, the rest of the ministry that you will call him to. Open doors for him um, that, he might, that he might blossom, that he might share his gifts in the places that you have um, already prepared for him to go. We ask all of this 
In the name of Jesus, we lay our hands upon you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, sending you off of our lives.